John here, guys, and today we're talking about the DJI Avada and the new O3 goggles. And is this thing anything more than a toy for experienced FPV pilots? And maybe it is, but for beginners, this could be the ticket to getting you up in the air and experiencing the joy of flights. I mean, look at this thing. Does this look like a toy to you? If you compare it directly to a racing drone or a freestyle drone, it's not going to be as good. And the people that are hobbyists in those categories are going to be saying it's not as good. If you compare it to something like a Mavic for only stabilized footage, it's also not going to be as good. But what is it best at? It's best at getting a new pilot to experience the incredible feeling of flying. And you don't need the dozens or hundreds of hours of learning how how to fly crashing thousands of times before you can actually maneuver a craft like this because of DJI's stabilization features baked in it's good enough to go from the get-go so what are the top pros that make this one of the best drone releases of all time one the ease of use it's so easy to buy this thing open it up and within a few minutes you're up in the air flying something that you could never do before without dozens or hundreds of hours of practice practice and learning very, very slowly. Two, the max speed on this thing is not as fast as a freestyle or racing drone. You're typically gonna be only going about 15, 20 miles an hour, and if you put it into sport mode and really punch it all the way, you're not even gonna to get to 50 miles an hour. Because of this and its overall fairly sturdy construction, you're not going to be exploding this thing on impact unless you do something silly like fall out of the air because you didn't pay attention to the control link from 100 feet up. Outside of that, it's very tough to break this thing. I've had several crashes that I've induced by flying it a bit recklessly directly through some concrete stairs, trying to go through a little gap, and this thing was totally fine. The replacement parts of this have been designed to be user replaceable. This essentially is a roll cage that protects the battery, the top of the drone, and the camera system. So if you crash upside down, it's gonna hit that roll cage instead of those components. And if you did manage to break it, I have barely even scuffed it in all the crashes I've put on this thing. The replacement is only $19 and it's about five or six screws in order to swap it out. Very easy. Similarly, the ducks are about $26, $27 and you can swap that out with a few screws as well. This thing is meant to be user repairable. Unlike most of other DJI's solutions out there, they're learning. They know this is marketed towards a slightly different segment than their traditional offerings and they have adjusted accordingly. Three, the goggles in this remote can be used on other crafts, other builds. Now, this is not personally what I'm going to be using to fly other quads because it's just not as good as the hobby grade radios that I have behind me right here, but it's pretty good. And if you didn't want to go invest in another radio and receiver, you can have less wiring and control everything with this. If you were to switch over to the O3 unit, the goggles you can use with any DJI system out there. The old ones you have, you do have to upgrade everything on those old Vista and air units and the new O3 system. System. The O3 system is essentially the same quality that you get on the Avada and you can build your own drone and so if this was your first thing that you use to get stabilized footage, you can build your own quadcopter that has full manual controls like this Foxier Bind and Fly that I'm going to have on the channel in a very short time and then you have something that can grow with you. It's not just a toy, it is a complete solution and you're buying into this ecosystem. This goggle fitment is a bit controversial. Not very good fitting for some. It doesn't really have a very good fan solution if you get foggy and there's also no input. So you can't use this as a monitor for gaming unlike some of the other analog goggles that I've had in the past. That is a little bit disappointing, but the OLED screens in here are extremely nice they just absolutely look beautiful and they're the only things that can really represent this high quality of a footage you need a high quality screen to be able to display it and the pair of this in the o3 unit is just absolutely mesmerizing it's almost tear inducing when i see it i've been waiting since the first time i flew a drone in fpv on analog probably six or seven years ago dreaming that this would one day be a reality, not knowing if it would ever even be here. And it's here, and this is it. This is the latest generation. Now, the V1 system was actually that 
tear inducing whenever I tried it. It was so beautiful, but this is another factor of improvement on there. It's just more resolution, more bit rate. You can see each individual blade of grass, even as you're flying fast, unbelievable and breathtaking to behold it. Now these goggles don't fit everyone's face. I've heard a lot of people complaining that they don't fit. I guess I have sort of a weird shaped head because these are the lightest and best feeling, most comfortable goggles I've ever had. I love them. Your mileage may vary. If you don't have a head that's shaped like sloth from the Goonies, then you may not have as nice of an experience as I do. But finally, having a weird shaped head pays off for the first time ever. Bonus. N5, there is beautiful DJI stabilization built into this thing, but if you want to step it up even further, if you use the right combination of settings, you can actually get gyro data on these video files and process it through a free application called GyroFlow. That is actually even better than the built-in stabilization, so if you turn that stabilization off in your settings, stabilize it in post in gyroflow it'll be even smoother this thing has so much control yes i have owned and flown a number of cinewhoops over the years but none of them um, could i fly in my house as easily without a worry of bumping into the walls also dji has some really nice crash protection so if you do a slight bump you're just going to kind of bump away from the wall and not go crazy. Cinewhoops are very heavy for the payload they're carrying, especially with a full-size camera. And they traditionally, if you bump anything, can go like crazy, sucking into the wall. And you have to worry, if you're flying inside of a house, am I going to fly and break a painting on the wall? Am I going to hit a knock a picture off the wall? Am I going to fly into someone's big screen TV and smash it? You don't really have to worry about that as much with this drone. Now the bads. It is expensive. But I tell it seems expensive. If you buy the kit, it comes with this wand controller, which is kind of a cool and fun novelty, but for actual manual control, you do need this. I really wish they would have had a bundle with this because as it is, is, this is going to cost you an extra $200. So everything is very expensive because this is what's going to allow you to do manual mode and get a little bit more control. And all you do to arm it up is first hit this start button and then to start spinning the motors, you move both sticks down and in. At that point, you'll hear the motors start spinning. You let go of the sticks and then you move this left stick up to take off. This is up and down. To initially take off, you move it just past halfway, it'll start to lift off. Move it up a little bit more till you get to your desired height, and then you put it back to around center if you wanna hover, lower it a little bit to go down, raise it a little bit to go up. Now on the other control is left and right, and that is going to yaw or spin you like this or like this. Then your right stick in DJI automatic mode is forward, back, strafe to the left, strafe to the right. Very simple if you're a gamer. If you ever get disoriented, don't know where you are, get a little too close to something, a little too high, this is your pause or stop or oh shit button. Hit that and it'll instantly stop itself, hover in place and wait for your next command. Very easy. That's the 60 seconds of instruction that I give to anybody to fly for their first time and I haven't had anyone even come close to crashing yet. Even in high winds, this thing will get blown around a little bit. But as you can see, if you put it into gyro flow, you can make even the most angled blown around footage look super smooth. Now let's talk about the footage itself. You can go pixel peeping all day. It's very similar to the DJI Action 2, which as we all know is not as good as the latest GoPro Hero 11. Now, the latest Hero actually also has 10-bit color, which means that you can grade it even better than before, and it is punching higher above its weight than it ever has. Now, the latest update with the Avada does mean that you can also get 10-bit color. Is it gonna be quite as good as the GoPro still the answer is no but by having a more complete lightweight solution it's totally usable for YouTube um, especially if you're not going to be selling this footage 
Uh, now this thing is also powerful enough that you can put a GoPro mount on here, take advantage of all of the extra stabilization features that this thing has and fly it that way. Of course, your flight times are going to be reduced. Flight times in manual mode going a little bit faster, more like 10 to 11 minutes. But if you're cruising in auto level modes, you're going to be able to get 15, 16 minutes. The advertising says 18. I don't know if that's really true unless you're just kind of hovering, but flying around that is two to three times longer than I can get with a freestyle drone keep in mind when I'm flying a racing drone I can normally get less than two minutes of flight so being able to fly as fast as I want on this thing and be able to get over 10 minutes is incredible more than five times the flight time now I know for those people that fly Mavics that want to fly 30 minutes plus that may be the case for you but when you're actually flying an FPV and getting close to things hitting obstacles hitting things like that it takes a lot of concentration being able to concentrate that intently on over 10 minutes is actually kind of tough so i rarely ever fly more than six or seven minutes because my brain just needs a chance to rest so keep that in mind so that's kind of what this thing is for if we were to compare this to a car race car drivers are saying this thing is not as good as what i fly stunt car drivers which are like freestyle pilots are saying this thing is not as good as what i fly cinematic flyers who fly a red komodo are saying this thing is not as good as what i fly and they are all correct but for the average car buyer out there you want a toyota camry that's going to get you from point a to point b comfortably easy to use easy to drive gonna be fuel efficient not get two miles per gallon like you might on a race car and that's exactly what this thing is you're gonna see a lot of videos reviews from people that fall into those other categories saying how it's worse than what they use and they're not wrong but your use is probably going to be a lot more in line in what this is made for especially at first then as you use this as a tool to learn how to fly you may decide to graduate but you can still stay within DJI's ecosystem still get that great beautiful picture build your own drone and then take advantage of all the things those other categories of people were saying this is a system and this is your first thing to help you learn how to use that system not bad is it for everyone if you already are an experienced pilot, it may not be for you at all. I'm going to keep this thing because I think it's easier and nicer to fly around than any Cinewhoop I've ever tried before. And that's quite a big statement where you could never really have somebody experience something like that without a craft that had all of DJI's bells and auto stabilization features built into it. So for me, this is a no brainer. I actually expected to just buy this, review it, sell it, keep the goggles, but I'm keeping this thing. It's that good. I think I might sell my Slam Squirt 2, which is pretty much the best Cinewhoop up to this point. So what are you guys going to do? Are you flying the DJI? Do you like it? Do you have the Avada? Did you throw the Avada away? Did you think it was a mistake? I think it is a really nice Cinewhoop. It has a lot of control. It has very light footprint. And the fact that you have the oh shit button means that I can keep it around to let people experience FPV for the first time. And that is worth something. I don't think that's going to be worth it for everyone. But for people like me, if you want to be a good ambassador to FPV, leave it on the auto stabilization settings. They can fly and experience FPV with about 60 seconds of instruction.